everybody. So uh, in my uh, quest to make the perfect modular gaming table, uh, so if you, if you guys watch my channel, you, you probably know that I'm much more of a fan of like skirmish games where there's a, like a small squad and uh, there's, there's less miniatures and lots more terrain. You know, like I, I really like that. I like the um, having the uh, terrain stuff to play around, um, like climb on top of, run around and jump off of or whatever. Um, so, but my favorite skirmish games are like uh, Frostgrave and um, Warcry and uh, like I love Mordheim. I love the setting of Mordheim as a uh, as a game setting. Uh, so, I um, I found these these kits. Um, these are this is. Um, it's foreground, yeah, foreground four, spelled with a four, uh, and they're they're a, a UK company, and they make terrain. It's all it's MDF, and then I think that they have some resin stuff too, that's like simple resin molds, you know, some cast stuff, and um, this stuff is great. So it's like perfect for like Frostgrave and Mordheim, but. Um, I uh, I don't do a lot of MDF because it's um, I feel like it's a good skeleton to like work off of. So I got this kit and it was kind of sitting in my pile of shame for a while because I wanted to um, experiment with some different ways to sort of improve MDF kits. You know, because I feel like they need, they need something. Like you can't just paint them. You have to, you have to do something to add to it to make it look as good as like plastic, you know, terrain. But that's the thing is that they cost a fraction of what like plastic does, or they're just so much easier to build than building something yourself by hand. So I think that they're a really good skeleton to kind of work off. So that's what I did is I, Kind of used it. Well, actually, I mostly just painted it, but I I tr tried a bunch of things to um, sort of improve this kit and make it look like something that I'd be really proud to put on my table. You know, that doesn't scream MDF. Uh, and then these kits are awesome. I think they're really cool. Like the the it's a little ruined house, and then it's blown apart on one side, and it has playable interiors, and then it's uh, it's four inches by four inches, but then it comes apart and uh, like snaps together. So yeah, very cool kit. And I'm planning on doing more of these. I think it might turn into a thing on the channel where I'm just trying to improve MDF kits and make them look really cool. But, uh, but anyways, yeah, let's do some, uh, some painting. Hey everybody, so uh, I ordered one of these Fabled Realms uh, kits off of eBay and <clears throat> they're, uh, I think they're like a cut above other MDF kits. Like you can see that they come kind of repainted. Um, they have, they're like, I, I think that they're pretty high quality. Um, they have kind of more of a, they're more stylized kind of fantasy instead of just like blocky looking. Uh, but I have some ideas on how to like improve this stuff. And also, <laughs> so when I was like popping all this stuff off of the, um, the sprues, you're supposed to save these because they fit into things. Like they, these little pieces like fit into, um, you know, little nooks and crannies and stuff, which is pretty fiddly. Um, like I was getting ready, I, I, uh, I was like tossing these guys and then I found out that I was supposed to save them. <laughs> so 
Uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that either. Uh, so they do come like pre-painted. They don't paint the, um, there's, there's the edges, you know, and then you have like the laser burns. And it seems like they painted them or like did something, like hit them with a spray paint or something and then did the laser cuts because you, because you can see the smoke and the like laser burns. So it's like part of the reason why you want to paint them is to cover up the laser burns. But um, it's not nothing. They're like primed sort of, you know, it's like the this is something something for the paint to stick to. So anyways, I'm going to start putting things together. OK, so the instructions tell you to put together some things uh, and then in cell assemblies and put them together. So I've kind of done as much of that as I want to right now, um, because basically like these pieces, uh, these fit together like this and then they slide in here uh, like that. But I want to start painting now before I start doing that because uh, a couple reasons. So I want to do these floors. I'm not happy with these floors, just the way that they look. And it's going to be easy to paint the floors first and then uh, slide them in. And the walls, the walls, um, <clears throat> there's a couple things I want to do with these. So instead of using these little inserts to go in here, I'll just show you one. I just found one that will fit. Uh, they have this like kind of paper product. It's like cardboard and it's not as thick as the MDF. So it kind of slides in there. There's still some gaps, but you know, it does look cool. But what I want to do instead is I found this, um, oh, by the way. I found this uh, this cool paper, and this is for I think this is for Model Railroad. It might be dollhouse stuff, but basically I want to put this on on the other side instead of these little panels or painting it. So that's just going to have that look of a stone behind the um, the you know, wood fascia. That makes sense. So I'm gonna start doing that. Okay, so first up, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna start doing this stuff on the, um, on the backs of these. So when I ordered these, I think pretty sure I got these off eBay too. I don't know if you can see that. There's supposed to be some texture to this and it's like <clears throat> I think they advertise it as like 3D kind of embossed paper you know with stone so I was hoping that it had a little more texture it doesn't like if I could dry brush it it doesn't but I'm gonna hide it you know behind these uh, behind these things so anyways what I want to do first is I'm gonna glue it down and that's just gonna be doing its thing while I'm doing other things and then I am I'm using PVA glue and uh, PVA glue is also called um, book binders glue and there's a reason you know our school glue there's a reason why and it's because um, basically it's the strongest it's gonna create like the strongest um, connection between like paper products or wood you know, it's, it's the same thing as wood glue. It's the same thing as uh, book binders glue, school glue, because uh, basically that's what you want when you're using, when you're, when you have two like fibrous surfaces that you want to glue together. It's going to create the strongest bond. Plus it has some working time. It's just, you want to use PVA glue for this, for MDF, which works way better. So I'm just gonna brush it on there kind of thin. And then I can even like use like a credit card or something to push this flat, but that's that's good enough. So 
So I'm just gonna let that set up over here while I'm doing that. In fact, all of these guys are gonna get that on the other side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do, do all of these. All right, so I've got uh, this, uh, this stuff glued and I cut this one out so you can kind of see how that looks. This was the driest one. So it just slides in there like that. And then you have that look of, uh, you know, the stone wall behind there. And like to cut out little stones in between, in between there and then get them matched up with everything, that would be a huge pain. So this is just gonna give the illusion of that. And then these come in super handy. So these are tile samples from Home Depot. So I just set them on top of things, you know, to, I have a few of these, not enough where like I walked out of the store and they're like, Hey, why do you have so many free samples, man? But like a few, you know, they come in handy. So anyways, I'm going to start painting these, uh, these floors. I want these to be like, that's not acceptable to me. That's just gonna need some work. And then on the um, on the very top of the um, the structures, there's there's like these guys. They go on the other side, so they they have me covered with my plan. All right, so I'm gonna start painting these. Okay, so to do these, um, I've got few colors, um, just some, you know, cheapo craft paints, but I'm just going to go for kind of a classic slate, uh, gray. Uh, I don't, I don't use my good miniature paints or good paints at all to do terrain stuff. <laughs> I use, uh, like Walmart Hobby Lobby brand. Also, where I live in Colorado, it's a little bit easier to get to like Hobby Lobby or, or um, uh, Walmart than it is to get to a, uh, a hobby store. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a really simple little palette. Need a lot of paint. All right, if you're following along and you want to get these colors of craft paint, I have Ceramco Black, uh, Full Cart Prairie Sage, and Apple Barrel Granite Gray. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, so I'm just going to use a sea sponge and kind of, you know, dab off some some paint because I want to get like that kind of mottled look. Kind of get some, add some texture where there isn't texture. And I'm going to work from dark to light. I want to get my shadows in first before I do my highlights. Okay, and then if I'm, you know, mixing colors as I go along, it's totally fine. It's like mixing, this is just another piece of MDF. I always have some lying around because it's super useful. You could use like cardboard or whatever to do this too. Just something that's protecting your little work surface. All right, so that's basically the, the look that I'm going for. You know, kind of just a model looking stone texture and like I said you know if I mix the colors in here on my palette or in the sponge it's totally fine just put some variation in there instead of one solid color you know gray or blue or whatever like 
so. Okay, and then, yeah. let's see. So, that's how that looks like with the, um, the sub-assembly kind of part done. So it's just a lot easier to kind of paint some things and then put them together. All right, so I'm gonna start cutting these guys out, doing the rest of my uh, sub-assembly. And um, I'm using a, a scalpel. Personally, I like using a scalpel better for this stuff than an X-Acto. And I'm using, I'm doing multiple passes. Um, just, just so you know, so like a scalpel, you can get a scalpel like this plus a ton of blades, like say like 20 blades for like $7. And then to get this off, you either need to break the blade or you need to use a pair of pliers and they're super sharp. So that's just a couple of the reasons why I like these. They don't, the blade doesn't wobble, it doesn't come off. So yeah, and I'm trying to do, I'm doing multiple passes. Um, not trying to get it in the first, first go, just, uh, scoring it and doing multiple passes because pushing through it, trying to get through it in the first pass is how you break blades. Okay, so I, uh, Kind of dry fit these guys, and it's cool that they they fit together like that. You can make one little building out of it, or you can sort of spread them out and you know have a bigger playable surface, playable interiors. So, um, I really like it. I really like how it looks. The one part that I don't like is the laser burns. So, and then these kind of cartoony scratches. Uh, I think I can do better. So, what I wanna do is I think I'm gonna take these guys outside and then I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint them. But I'm gonna do it like this, um, for straight from above because like I've already added some some tolerance to just with this piece, like this this piece of like cardstock in between here, you know? So I don't want to um I don't want to mess up the the way that these things fit together. And I don't want to mess up the tolerances anymore. Because they're they're too tight, but they're tight enough, you know? So I wanna get rid of all the laser burns and then I might do something to mask off just these little parts. Uh, but what I think I wanna do, so I have, I have this, uh, this is like a, a stone texture paste or, or the spray paint. And uh, what I was thinking of doing is just kind of giving them a dusting from above. That's gonna be a quick, dirty, easy way to add some texture. And then I also have another color of spray paint that I like better for, um, you know, if I could get some orange peeling with this, I would just do that, but I don't, I'm not that good with spray paint <laughs> to get in a, a specific effect like that. So, but another thing I have too, 
is um, water putty. So this is um, this is water putty, and then this stuff it it when it dries, it looks very much like a stucco, like it has a stucco texture to it. And then I think what I could also do is maybe even put down uh, some uh, some crackle medium and get like a better cracked stucco. So I'm kind of talking myself into it. I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do this instead. All right, so I, I did a test piece. This is just a, a piece of MDF. And uh, I, I put some of... Um, put some of this stuff down, I painted it on here, and then I put the um, Derm's water putty on top of that. So it has some texture to it, right? It does look like stucco, but it didn't crack at all. So then I did the same thing. I tried some, um, I tried some Citadel stuff. I tried um, a grow in Earth and uh, a grow in Badland. And then these are, they're supposed to be like technical crackle paints. <clears throat> and we got a little teeny tiny bit of crackling in there. I don't know if you can even see it. Um, this one has a little bit of sort of a sandy texture. And then this one is just, it has a tiny, tiny bit of cracks in it. So that's a bust. Um, the, just no cracking at all. And I don't know if it's because I put it on to MDF because it could have just soaked it up. It could have just soaked up the medium. So then I reapplied some of this stuff. I put, I put some more of it on top of the paint. So hopefully what my, my hope is, is that if I, um, <clears throat> if I put a barrier, like I, I, I did these guys, I, I sort of pump them full of this stuff. Uh, if I put a barrier of acrylic on here, because these do have some paint, they do have a primer kind of layer. So it's sort of sitting on the surface and I pumped it full of this stuff. So it should make a difference, but I'm going to try this. And then I got something else. I got this, uh, I picked up this stuff at Michael's. Um, so this is a paste. Uh, it's not the right color, as you can see. But um, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try and mix this with another color and then put it on top of here and then see if that gives me some crackle effect. Just striking out here with the, uh, the cracking texture. So uh, I don't want to mix in too much paint because I don't want to change the, the properties of the medium, but I do want to change the color. So I'm just going to mix this together. Maybe add a little more of this. And supposedly this stuff, kind of like the thicker it is, the more it cracks. Um, I don't want it to be super thick though. So I'm just gonna try the same thing and just stipple it on here. But if this is going to work, we should know almost immediately because it should start to crack just as soon as it dries and then not putting on a thin layer. Oh, oh, I see, I see cracks. I see cracks. Look, you can see it happening. Okay, I think that's, that's the answer. That's the solution. Okay. All right, I'm gonna start putting that on these guys. That works. OK, 
and then the um, the color that I mixed with the um, the paste is uh, iced coffee, full cart acrylic iced coffee. So I'm getting the effect that I want. It is cracking. In fact, I don't hate it over the kind of like cartoony cracks. All right, so definitely got some some cracking on there. Looks super cool. Um, so I did like double down with this. It, you can't really see it as much on here. Like the cracks are gonna show up, but all right. So on this one, you can definitely see the cracks, but there's also glossiness under there because this is a different color underneath. And then it's got this on top, but you can see the, uh, the little glossiness in the cracks. So hopefully I can just use this stuff and get the cracks. Um, there's some other pieces that go on that I didn't pump full of the stuff. So I'm just gonna try some of the crackle paste like directly on top of this and then see what kind of effect that has. But um, hopefully if I put a wash on it too, it'll kind of sink into the cracks a little bit and then that will show up a little better. Okay, so I was uh, gluing up these guys and then I kind of stopped myself because I want to, I'm not sure what I want to do with this wood crane and stuff. So, you know, MDF doesn't have a grain to it. It would be cool if it did. If they made kits like this out of like plywood or something. But, uh, but what I want to try doing is just see if I can make some grain. And I'm using a wire brush and then dra dragging it across here to see if I can make it look a little more like wood. Man, that smells good. It's like the burnt NDF and then scrubbing on it. It smells like barbecue or something. All right. So that's not really showing up. I have a, I have this guy too. It's kind of just taking the, uh, the, the paint off of these parts. I don't hate the look of that either, but not really getting much as far as green, a little bit. What I could do is, uh, is glue some little wood planks on top of these, but I like how this looks, to be honest. That's working. Yeah, yeah, it's working. So um, I glued up everything last night and left it overnight to dry. And uh, I noticed some things. So there's these, these guys do actually serve a purpose. They aren't just to cover things up. Um, so some of these little sections, I noticed that the, like, I don't think that you're actually, are they in the directions they say not to glue this stuff up? So it just pops off. Um, and I think that that's because when they do these and then they're, they don't have a whole side that's blown out of them, they have playable interiors so that you can like lift the roof off. Like you can see that this one just kind of slides on right there. And then it, it's, this is a really flimsy connection right here. So, and then these, these things kind of cover up like if there is um, like spots in there that where the overlap where it isn't covered up uh, then these cover them up you know so I'm not sure how I feel about that I think I might just put some more of this plaster stuff like in these little cracks uh, because I really like having the, the rocks showing through better than having plaster everywhere. 
so but then for these for these shingles they look kind of cheesy so what i was thinking i actually wanted to try because i have i have uh you know like artist markers um alcohol inks uh markers so i wanted to just try drawing on them and then trying to get some uh like uh A little bit better looking shingles on here. So these are like they're they're artist markers, and then you can blend them together. They have uh, they like the alcohol is the um, uh, what do you call it? The binder, I guess, in the markers, like the thing that. Uh, that the you know, the pigments are in. So you can take these and then just kind of blend those colors together. Like so. so okay, so now I wanna start I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna kind of cover up like the uh, the edges where the paper shows up. And I'm just using some uh, burnt umber craft paint. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go around and kind of cover those up. And I'm using a really crapped out brush because I'm gonna gonna do some like streaky kind of dry brush stuff over brushing later so I think I'm just gonna use this but I want to cover up the, the paper first and uh, now I'm gonna do some dry brushing with this uh, iced coffee color um, I really do. I like these these full cart paints. Like they're they're actually they're pretty good. I enjoy using them. So I just want to get like edges and stuff. And um, this is I, I like this look, um, but the, the the wood doesn't look quite like aged enough. In fact, like I'm gonna add some of this uh, uh, prairie sage color. Right, so I'm gonna blot off a little bit of paint, uh, kind of come in and do a light dry brush. I want this wood to look very weathered and uh, just like it's been left to the elements. Uh, so I don't want it to look brown as much. I actually want it to look a little more gray. But the more, the more like the, it looks like it has a green, the better. Let me see how this looks on these shingles. So I'm kind of like mixing these colors together, this the iced coffee and the prairie sage color. Like they're getting mixed in the brush as I go. Um, but I'm gonna kind of dab off a little bit on my piece of MDF and then I'm gonna try and go with the grain, uh, with the wood. Make it look a little older, kind of weathered wood look. And the craft paints have like lousy coverage, but that's what we want. <laughs> cause, uh, cause it looks more, uh, looks more like old wood.
Right, so that's starting to look more like how I want it to for the wood and stuff. Um, so while I've got these colors out, well, I might like, touch that up a little bit in there. Um, so yeah, speaking of like, while I've got these colors out, uh, I'm gonna make some more of the, uh, like stucco stuff. Okay, so since I had those colors, I just mixed up some more of this stuff to make some more, uh, crack paste, crackle paste. And I'm going to use a really crapped out brush. And then I'm going to put some just in the, um, like the corners in, in, in between these little, uh, like to cover up things like this, where there's little spots that show through and hopefully I get more cracks. get that kind of stucco thing going on in there again. So I'm really hoping that this stuff cracks on its own without the, um, the other thing under it. All right, so oops, where's the part that's drying? Definitely getting some, uh, some cracks. Yeah, so it is working. I can see it. It's a little hard to see, but it's it's still drying. So I am getting the little cracks though. And this is definitely this is starting to look like how I how I envisioned it. But the, the um, I don't like these uh, these tiles on the roof. So I think that I'm gonna redo them uh, with terracotta. You know, which is pretty historically accurate. Like that's something that tiles would have been made out of. It's roof tiles. So just gonna use this uh, terracotta red color and then go ahead and put that on the roof, just on these tiles. And it also just, I feel like it makes it pop like the um, the red and the terracotta is just really going to do something for the roof and adding a, a punch of color to everything. Right, and then now to uh, to get these cracks to pop out, I'm gonna do a um, I'm gonna do a wash on them. I'm just gonna use some game color uh, umber, or let's see, this black. Yeah, but I think that's gonna look good. I might do both. I might use uh, a little bit of sepia and some uh, black wash and then I'm just going to put that on to the uh, I just want the cracks to show up so, maybe even do some streakies or down a little bit I just want those uh, cracks to show up a little better. All right. 
um, everything's dry. And I would say the real star of the show is this, uh, this stucco stuff that it just cracked like perfect. Like it really looks, um, like a, you know, old, uh, dingy cracked stucco. But, uh, but yeah, this all dried. It didn't get quite as much cracking in this stuff as I wanted because it's pretty thin and then it, uh, they're kind of spidery cracks, not, um, but you know, it still looks really cool. So I'm really, I'm super happy with it. I'm proud of it. Um, just as long as nobody steps on it, I think it'll be fine. It's going to have a place, a proud place on my, uh, on my gaming tables. All right. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll post some like turnaround pictures so you guys can get a really good look at it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, take care of yourselves. I'll see you guys next time.